Eric Fisher. We will start with Adam Grossbard, LA Daily News. Derek, this next game represents the halfway mark of the season for the team. Um, just where do you feel like the team is in terms of like coming together as a unit? Like where has it improved the most? Where does it still have room for improvement? Uh, yeah, no, I think, I think um, you know, considering, you know, I think where everybody was coming into uh, this season, you know, I, I think we're at a, at a pretty good, you know, place. Uh, you know, as you look at being around halfway through the season and, you know, I think overall we're healthy, which was a major concern of ours coming into this season. Uh, and so that, I think that's a real positive uh, because it, it, that gives us our best opportunity to, to continue to get better. Um, you know, when I think about things that, you know, we're, we're doing better, and, you know, but that we still need to improve in, I, I think we're we're starting to really defend at, at a higher level than, than we started the season uh, over the last three or four ball games. Uh, you know, I think we're doing some good things on that end. Uh, I, I think we've also improved our efficiency offensively uh, because we're trusting the pass more um, and we're trusting our teammates more uh, on the offensive end. And, and I believe that has allowed us to uh, become a more efficient team over the last uh, week or week and a half as well. Uh, in terms of growth opportunities for our group, uh, I think being able to sustain um, our effort, intensity, you know, discipline, focus for longer stretches in the game. Um, you know, we, we've played well and we've won some games and we've had some bigger leads, um, but we still want to just, you know, over the course of a 40 minute game, you know, try to get, you know, into the 30s somehow of being able to be focused um, detailed, committed, intentional, uh, purposeful, and like every decision we're making for at least 30 out of those 40 minutes. And teams are too good to, to not be able to do that. So uh, I think that's where we can get better. Um, and, and I think we, you know, we can, we have to figure out how to defend without fouling as, as well. Those, those would be two things that come to mind. Um, just doing a better job, not, not getting teams to the free throw line. Uh, Aria Schwartz, Winsider. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, I had a question. This is the second time you're playing the Mercury this season, and I'm curious how the scout has kind of changed for you looking at this team. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think Phoenix has gotten, you know, a, a lot better since opening day. Uh, you know, Sandy and, and their team, they had a lot to figure out, a, a, a lot of new personnel and, um, you know, down at Tarazi working her way back into basketball condition. And, um, you know, she's meant so much to this league. I think, you know, it's good to see her out there on the floor, uh, you know, but, you know, I think they've just gotten better. I, I don't know if the scout has really changed per se. Like, uh, I think Griner is, is uh, you know, everything really starts with her in the middle in a lot of ways. Uh, but they've gotten really good guard play from Bria Hartley and Shatori Walker Kimbrough. Uh, I think players like Mia Coffey have gotten better as the season has gone on. She's shooting the ball good, and they're getting good contributions from, uh, you know, from their supporting players. So I don't know if it's changed as much as they've just gotten better uh, over these last, you know, uh, you know, eight or nine ball games since we played them the first day, uh, which means we're going to have to be better than we were that day in, in order to try and win. Howard Megdahl, next hoops. Coach, good to chat with you. Thanks, um, you guys so far this year are 4-0 and at home and 3-3 three and three on the road. I understand you're playing all the games in the same spot, but this is a trend throughout the league. Uh, I'm wondering what you're seeing, if any difference, between home and road, and uh, if you can attribute anything to the – home court advantage despite the fact you guys are all playing in the wobble. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's an interesting data point. I, I wish, uh, I wish somebody could explain, you know, why things are remaining, uh, per usual for the WNBA. I, I think historically, um, home teams have you know, had quite the advantage, uh, in, in the W just based on 
um, you know, a number of factors in terms of travel and, and what that means. But, you know, I think also in, when, when you travel with limited resources, um, you know, I think that sometimes favors the home team. Uh, but in this case, you know, where everyone's working with somewhat equal levels of resource, uh, you know, staff, coaches, players, et cetera, it, it's interesting to see see the differences. Um, I, I don't know if the home games have, you know, maybe if we look back at it more closely, if the home games are at certain times of day compared to the road games and, and whether that factors into it or not. Uh, some of it is, I don't care where you line up, if you're playing against a really good team, <laughs> uh, it's hard to win. And so, you know, I think for us starting the season, you know, our strength of schedule was, uh, you know, was pretty high. And, um, you know, we, we play some good teams and, you know, I think teams are starting to get better as well. But it'll be interesting to see where this nets out by the time, you know, we finish this season. And whoever can find out how the heck the home teams had the advantage in the wobble, um, so it's, it's going to be an interesting case study to, to understand. I think at that point, it proves it's probably more mental than anything. Or maybe jersey colors, you know, have a lot to do with it as well. I, we personally think that we're better in purple. And, uh, you know, we played a lot of games in, in gold. And so we, we'll see if, if that maybe makes a difference. <laughs> Time for two more quick ones here. We'll go to Pavi HMB Media. Uh, hey, Coach, how are you? I'm good, Pavi. How you doing? I'm good. Um, kind of piggy, uh, piggyback off, piggybacking off the um, first question about, you know, what, uh, what you guys could do better. When I actually asked Chelsea that um, after the game, um, on a Saturday, she mentioned guard rebounding. Um, is that something that you've seen and, and kind of a key point that you guys want to hone in on and um, become better at? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, you know, we definitely want to continue to challenge our perimeter players to rebound the basketball better. Um, you know, we ask our front court players to do a lot in terms of defending and pick and roll, you know, defending post defense, uh, really helped, helping captain our defense from, from behind the basketball. And uh, a lot of times they're engaged, you know, like physically boxing out or around the rim with, with, with their counterpart. And it's really incumbent upon our guards and wings to, to get back in, not leak out, you know, not start heading towards half court because they, they're in a hurry to get to offense, but uh, finishing the possession defensively with the rebound. And I think that's something that all of our guards and wings can improve on. Um, so I think that Chelsea is definitely correct in that regard. And, you know, I think as a team, you know, it's an area that we can improve in, but we, you know, as coaches, we talked about it a little bit and we, because we've been turning teams over, um, you know, in, in recent games, there's been less field goal attempts for us to rebound. And, you know, if our defense continues to create that many turnovers, you know, where teams are not even getting a shot at the rim, you know, 18, 19, 20 times in a game, then it's going to be hard for us to win the rebounding battle um, if they're not getting field goal attempts. But I'd rather us lose the rebounds and, and keep creating turnovers um, if that's going to lead to wins for us. My last one for coach today, John W. Davis uh, with the Winsider. Good West Coast morning to you, coach. How you feeling? I'm good, John. How you doing today, man? Doing well, doing well. So what I wanted to ask you is, you know, looking at this schedule, this is the last time that you'll have three days off before the end of the season. You know, what have you wanted to accomplish in these days off where you're going to practice two days and you actually got to take one off? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's um, really important to, you know, try and, 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 and do some things that will help us get better, but at the same time, respect the schedule enough to, to, to know that, um, you know, these days are really hard to come by in this season. And so I, I, I think we still have to give the players room to recover as much as possible so that once we're kind of back in the bunker, so to speak, um, they have the energy necessary to push through. And it's tempting as, as a coach to, you know, try and really get after it a little bit, but, but then you defeat the purpose of having the days off uh, if you're just going to kind of get after it as though you have a game. Uh, and so I think for us, 
you know, we, we worked on some things today that we feel like will help us get better. We'll do the same tomorrow, but we're going to try and be as efficient as possible, get in and out as quickly as we can, um, just to extend our recovery as much as we possibly can so that once we're back at it on Wednesday night uh, and, and we're kind of back in that every other day mode, um, you know, we'll be thankful that we were able to get a little bit more recovery during this time. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Marie. We'll start with John W. Davis. Hi, Marie. Good West Coast morning to you. How you feeling? Pretty good. And you? Good, good. If you could, you know, if you feel, feel up to it, could you share an update on how your ankle feels? And then also, what is it like to have that be three of the five players on the court when you have your your roommates out there, you, Sydney, and Brittany. I saw you you three have played together. So what was that like, too? Um, so my body feels really good, my ankle, too. I've um, been doing a lot of rehab, and uh, Courtney's taking care of me. So um, I think I'm making a lot of progress. And um, just with my roommates, we're having a lot of fun. I really enjoy the time. And like um, the entire team makes this experience um, a lot better. Like, you know, it's not always easy to be like, locked in in the bubble and um, we are having fun though. We're having each other's back. So it's really good. Uh, we'll go to Aria Schwartz, Windsider. Hey, Marie. <clears throat> I hope you're doing well. I'm curious, you've been on a few teams in this league, but what have you learned from the vets specifically on the LA Sparks that have kind of inspired you or, or pieces that you can put into your bag? Um, I think especially from uh, watching NECA and watching CP and um, also a little bit from Chelsea, just the poise they have playing the game. And um, I've been like rushing a lot um, my last two years and teams are where I was at, I just didn't take my time. And I think that's one thing I really learned from them. Just like when you catch the ball, look what you have, like take your time, be poised. And um, I think that's a really like valuable lesson I've learned so far. Howard Megdahl, next hoops. Hey, Marie, how are you? Um, question for you. The league as a whole is playing significantly better when they are designated as the home team. You guys are no exception. You're 4-0 at home, 3-3 three and three on the road. I've asked different players about it. Some have mentioned the hype videos being something that helps. Uh, Derek mentioned you guys think you play better in purple. I'm just wondering if any of the things that go along with being the home team you think could possibly be responsible for this advantage, just in the way you think about it. You're even shooting 60% at home and 40% on the road so far this year, although a small sample. Um, honestly, I haven't really thought about that um, half the time. Like I think the intro video and like the way the introduction is um, obviously helps with the hype. Um, I think we just got to do a better job as a team, um, not thinking about it as an away game, because at this point we're all here. So it's not necessarily we're away or at home. It's just a neutral um, place, like court where we play. Um, so we just got to make sure that we bring the effort every every night. Um, I think that's all the questions we have for Marie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Questions for Simone Augustus. We'll start with Adam Grossbard, LA Daily News. Hey, Simone. Uh, this next game represents the midway point in the season. W where do you feel like the team is midway, and how does that compare to like a normal season's midway point? Uh, obviously, a normal season would be all-star break, and everybody's getting ready to kind of relax and, and rest your body. But in this season, I mean, we're right where we need to be. We're continuing to get better every game as opposed to the first, what, three three or four games where we were winning every other. We strung a few in a, few a, row, a, few in a row together. And so now we um, we just kind of want to build on that and continue to take care of our bodies and stuff like that. Like this rest um, coming up in this break time has been good and much needed so that we can head into where we're trying to get to as far as playoff positioning and focusing more on the end of the road um, for later in the season. 
Chris Camello, Nightfall Media. Uh, good morning, Simone. Uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, how the chemistry has really forged, especially with you in the in this in the second unit, and what your role has been with some of the younger players like uh, Christina Nigue and Taya Cooper and Brittany Sykes. Well, I'm just passing on knowledge. Um, you know, when we get into our huddle right after the first group go out to tip the ball off, we always have a discussion. And I'm always on them about bringing energy. You never know who's going to come off the bench first, but it doesn't really matter. No matter what, the bench mob pays attention to the floor of the game, and we bring what needs to be ground, whether it be defense, offensive efficiency, or just flat out energy and just getting after it. And that's something that the bench in this league separation separates the contenders from pretenders. Um, and we feel like we have a bench that can take us a long way. And with the young legs, the youth that we have, um, it's just a matter of just making sure that they stay focused in on the things that they do well and when they're out there together with whatever combination of players that they just be efficient and execute, you know, when we're out there. Tukani New in LA Times. You mentioned the bench and um, obviously Raquana coming off the bench has been a huge lift just points wise. Uh, what impresses you the most about the way she's been able to adjust to that bench role and how she embraces that? Oh, that's her thing. You know, after speaking to her, she says she enjoys coming off of it. To be honest, she, you get a chance to see the flow. That's that's what people don't understand. Like, when you start, and I've been there, done that. When you start, you kind of have to create the flow as opposed to coming off the bench. You see where it's at. So you see what's needed or you see where you can kind of attack and things like that. And so that's where Raquan has been great at finding out where she can attack. She sees what plays we're running, what defensive schemes the other team is running. And so she takes advantage of that as well as using her ability, like her speed and quickness gets her a lot of open shots, just running the lane and spotting up and letting a player like Candace Parker, who is very tough to defend, bring the rock down and dish her and find her in the corner. So that's been amazing, you know, to see that growth over the last few games of her transitioning from the starting group to the second group and being able to utilize that same, you know, focus and mentality to get herself going in that second group. Howard Megdahl, next hoops. Hey, Simone, good to chat. I um, want to ask you about something uh, a little bit uh, bigger picture. Overall this year, even though you guys are all playing in the same place, home teams are 38 and 24 this year. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, I've talked to different players who have cited the hype video, have cited different uniforms. I'm wondering two things. One, if you think there's anything to that, specifically in Bradenton, and two, you're one of the rare players who actually did even better on the road historically than you have at home. I'm wondering how you managed to psych yourself up for a quote unquote road game. A road game? I mean, we always had the focus of we all we got when we we're on the road. And so it's no different being in Bradenton. We kind of have that road game feel, even though um, it does feel good to have our DJ <laughs> model speed mix when it's our home game and things like that. But it's still we all we got. When we step on the court, it's our team, our staff, the few family members. And so our focus is creating the energy that we need and then pushing forward through each game. Um, I mean, Bradenton is no different. The only thing is we don't have to fly and all that stuff, but as far as how we come out and how we, um, you know, get after it, it's the same. Hey, Simone. Oh. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> So you've been, it's R.A. Schwartz of Windsider. You've been playing the four a fair amount this season. And I'm curious, in regards to that, how does your body feel? You know, do the minutes maybe tack on a little bit extra weight or whatever? And then a follow-up is, I want to know the history behind you picking number 33. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you know what? I just said this the other day in a group meeting. I was like, man, I have a newfound respect for post players. We always talk as guards and posts, like who does the most work and everything. And I'm like, it, it's different for a guard. We weren't, we worry about cutting off the screens, guarding faster people, whatever. Posts actually bang a lot. So I'm out there guarding somebody that's 10, 15, 20 pounds bigger than me, trying to bang and push them off the block and stuff like that. So I find my body being a little bit sore than normal, you know, after games. But I feel, you know, I feel good. I'm able to do what I need to do for the team at that position and it opens the floor up a little bit more with people having to pay more attention to me, you know, at the floor as far as my scoring ability. So that's been a good thing. And then what was the second part? I'm sorry. Um, 33. I chose 33 because I couldn't get number three, to be honest. Um, I'm a big fan of 
Ellen Iverson. And so the only number available for me was 33. So I was like, all right, I'm going to be twice twice as good as AI. So that, that was like my motivation behind 33. Uh, last question. We'll go back to 2 me with the LA Times. Simone, you mentioned a lot your health and obviously being a veteran player in this league. That's really just the most important value you have or the most important thing you have to make it through this season. As a first year player on the Sparks, what's it been like getting to know Courtney and working with her um, during this during this season? It's been amazing. Um, Courtney's been very open and honest with whatever it is. She was like, always be honest with me so that I'll know what it is that I can do to help you in the, in the process of whatever it is. And obviously everyone knows my medical history as far as injuries and stuff like that. And to be honest, she's been very optimistic about what she can do and how she's able to get me through the season and be ready for the playoffs and not just ready, but really able to do whatever I want to do. And so it's been, it's been great to have someone like that. You constantly see Courtney studying, like on our way here, she was in her book. She had like a coloring book that was like the anatomy of the body. And she was like, she's constantly learning and figuring out new ways that she can, you know, help people, uh, help the players as far as like holistic or whatever it was. Like, I appreciate the effort that she puts into um, trying to make sure her players have the resources they need to be in optimal shape, you know, optimal performance. Thank you, Simone.